Okay, continuing Job's answer in Job 28. Surely there is a vein for silver. That's where silver comes from. A grand Job who didn't know nothing in the ancient days. A place for gold where they find it. And you find gold and a plate gold is found, you know, many places. Iron is taken out of the earth. Brass is molten out of the stone. Now, brass in the Bible is interesting, is a picture of judgment. And the Bible says the rock is Jesus. And out of that rock comes judgment, brass. And Jesus is described as brass in Revelation 1. He setteth an end to darkness and searches out all perfection. The stones of darkness and the shadow of death. The flood breaketh out from the inhabitant. To be Noah's time. Out of the ground. When the, when the rains of Noah's time came, the heavens opened up, the ground opened. The rain just came from everywhere. Even the waters forgotten of the foot. They are dried up. They are gone away from men. So there are waters of the Noah's flood that you haven't seen. Going back in outer space and going back in the earth. As for the earth, out of it cometh bread, plants, wheat, barley, and under it is turned up as it were fire, hell. So, a place where we get our wheat, bread, corn, under our feast is a place of fire. And you would think the scientists say that it's it's a molten core. You would think after all of billions and billions and billions and billions of billions of years, you would figure that that there's no source of heat going to the core that the earth would, you know, cool down and got hard again. They can't explain that, but God did. It's hell, everlasting fire. The stones of it. Are the place of sapphires and it has dust of gold inside the earth there's a path which no fowl knoweth bird which the vultures eye have not seen the lions whelps the young lions have not trotted it for the fierce lion passed by it and da uh, Dan, job is getting ready the realm of wisdom and understanding and he has laid out where all riches come from in the earth. He has laid out there are places where animals have not been. And what he's coming to now in verse 9 to, to 28 is, what is the price of wisdom and understanding? Why would he ask such a question? He's got three friends that don't know nothing. He has lost his children. He, his wife is gone. He's lost all his animals. Uh, death taken away violently and there, there's been the windstorm that killed his children and he's plagued from head to the crown of his head to the sole of his feet he's got these boils and he's in pain and he's in agony these three friends are not helping and job's like where do i get wisdom and today we would run to the doctor's office we would run to the hospital we would run to the bank, we'd run to a credit card place, we'd run anywhere. But that's not wisdom. And doctors are just practicing where God knows. In verse 9, He, God, putteth forth His hand upon the rock, and overturns the mountains by the roots. He cutteth out rivers among the rocks. How do you do that? That's a good question. If you come to a place, you ever come to a place, you take like uh, uh, Niagara Falls. There's a rocky coast along Niagara Falls. How did that water break that rock? Why are there places where there are rocks and the water has been able to break those rocks? Why? How? Only God. You think rocks are strong, but not the water within time. And his eye, God's eye, seeth every precious thing. 
wherever it is. If it's in the earth, it's in the pocket, it's in the safe, it's in a wallet, wherever that precious thing, wherever a precious soul is, God knows where it is. Jesus tells us that God attends the funeral of sparrows. Evidently, that's precious to God. Eleven. He bindeth the floods from overflowing. So, if there's a flood, God has allowed it. Again, it could be the devil. And where there's no flood, God says, hey, no, don't you go over your banks. And they say today, global warming and ice ice coming and everything like that. And we're going to be overflowed with water and we're going to be having no water. They can't make up their mind. But God says, listen, I'm in control, not the weather. And if I want to drown out New York City, I will do it. If I don't want to make any water over there and you have no water, God says, I'll do it. I'm in charge. If I want that area to be a beach, I will make it a beach. That high tide will go as far as I tell it to go, and that low tide will go as low as I tell it to do. That's all in the power of God. So it's amazing what God does. And the things that the things that is hid bringeth forth to light. And and we're seeing today it's weird because there is uh lacking of water, water being evaporated. They're finding all this stuff now. These riverbeds, these bodies of water are drying up. And that's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. The thing, the thing that is hid, bring it forth to light. There it is. But, where, okay, now here's the question we're looking at now. Where shall wisdom be found? That's a good question, Joe. And where is the place of understanding? It's not in a college. Not when they're teaching evolution. And then when they do teach Bible, they're ranking on the Bible, ranking on God. Not to a, a, a Christian a, a, a seminary. I mean sin. I didn't say seminary. I said seminary where they're downplaying the Bible and they're changing the Bible. And they're saying that Jesus said this and he never said it. They're correcting the Bible. That's not wisdom and knowledge. You're not going to get it in the public school system where they're listen, they're lifting up Allah and putting Jesus down. They're, they're upholding the atheist and putting the Christian down. So that's not the place of wisdom and understanding. Job asks a very important question. Where is wisdom? What do I find? Where do I find? How do I find? When do I find? The who, what, where, when, and how of finding wisdom and understanding. And the relationship of Job is the Bible, God. God. Here it comes down to. Now, listen to me. Why, why is my children dead? Not, God, you killed my children, but what's the understanding? Why did it happen, God? Why have I lost all my animals to fire, to death, and... Uh, thieves. Why am I head to toe in boils? What can I do to relieve myself of this pain and suffering? Lord, have I sinned against you? What is it? What are you trying to... And listen, I, there people say you ought not to question God in your trials and troubles. I say you can, and I have. I've been in predicaments in my life where I've been in trouble. And I say, Lord, I don't blame God. There's a difference between blaming God and asking. I say, God, out of this whole situation, how can you get the honor and glory? What lesson? And Lord, if I am sinning against you, well, what must I do to get right with you, Lord? What sin is it that I need to confess? Now, you're questioning God, aren't you? You're not blaming. Now, you can question God. God, why are you destroying my family? God, why are you doing this to me? That's not an answer question. That's a blame question. And that's what Job probably doing now. He wants to know, okay, what can I do? I've been there. And I've asked God. I questioned God, that great mortal sin of baptism. And he's revealed to me something. 
Man knoweth not the price thereof. So, don't get yourself in debt looking for wisdom and knowledge in a grant or a loan. Because that's not the price. I only got a degree, a doctorate degree, because someone told me that if I go into the ministry, they're going to want to see that stupid piece of paper on the wall. That's why I ventured into it. And then plus I learned a lot from the Bible and from God. But I've been many years out of school and I'm still learning a lot more. And I have not stopped learning. I'm still writing commentaries. It may not have been published, but I'm still learning. Neither is it found in the land of the living. All right, a lot of people look to their pastors. Oh, he's the great and mighty one. He may not be have the answers. Not every pastor has ever gone through all the troubles of life. <laughs> he can't. A pastor can't tell you a thing about children if he has no children. Pastor can't tell you about marriage if he's never been married. Some people have knowledge and wisdom that others don't have. Some people have had a, a spouse die. Some people have had their children die. Some people have had broken marriages. Some people have gone against the Lord and come back. That's wisdom and knowledge by experience. The death saith, it's not in me. The sea say it, it's not in me. The bodies of water above your head, that's outer space, that's a body of water. And the, and the waters on the earth say, hey, you can't come to me. You can't go all the way down to find the Titanic. You can't go all the way down to, to that, that trench in the Pacific Ocean say, I'm going to find God. It's not there. Now, you can find the beauty of God. You can find out that there are fishes down there, there are marine life that man has never seen and how beautiful it is. You can go to Mars and you can go to Saturn with all your cameras and you can take the, you're not going to find God there. You're not going to find the wisdom of God. It's not there. But you can find it, the, the creation works of God, the wonder of God. It, the wisdom and the understanding cannot be gotten for gold. You can't buy it. Neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. Currency of the world, the gold and silver market may not buy you the wisdom and understanding of God. Paul was broke as a Christian. Paul was broken as a Christian. Paul lived by being a tent maker and then off the ministry that he had as evangelist and he knew more than your average seminary professor today. And I say seminary purposely because a lot of these seminaries are seminaries. They sin. Paul did not buy Jesus. He served the Lord. And the Lord granted him. Christians serve the Lord and they get great and wonderful knowledge from the Lord. Things that we know by the Bible today, by study, or by men who have studied the Bible, who have lived the Bible, who loved the Lord and did right, and God has given them revelation. It cannot be valued with gold of Ophir. It's mostly Ophir, gold in the Bible, is it's mentioned as a place of gold. With the precious onyx, or the sapphire. So precious gems and ores are not going to buy you the wisdom of God. Now, what's one thing that Job has learned? And when we get to the end of 42, and 43 is not written, but 44. What can Job get in his afterlife after Job 42? You have pain and misery? Come, come to me. I can tell you all about it. You and I can talk. I've had people in the ministry who, whose spouse has died. And they come to me and say, can you go comfort that woman? Can you go comfort that man? Their spouse has died. You've gone through it. Jesus Christ. We had a time that Job said, God, you have eyes like I have. And God can say, no, I don't. God, have you felt like I felt? God's going to say, no, I can't. But when Jesus Christ was born and Jesus Christ lived for 33 and a half years and Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures, 
And when, she, <coughs> when Jesus wept, Jesus, <coughs> excuse me, when Jesus slept, he, he got angry. When Jesus uh, sighed in spirit, when Jesus had people against him, he had people love him, he had people hate him. Now God can say, yeah, I know how you feel. That's wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom and knowledge that you get from experience and from God is no man can describe childbirth, and I heard men try to describe it. Only a woman's given birth can describe that. Imagine a man talking about childbirth. And there are things that you've gone through in your life that Job's gone through that no one else has gone through, and you can help others. Job's three friends have no wisdom, no understanding. They're not hurting. They have not lost nothing. And they're living high on the hog. And they're telling Job wrong things. And Job's like, hey, I want the truth here. And I'm not getting it from you. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it. So don't come to looking for gold again. Look how many times gold shows up. It's not going to buy it. Crystal. Wonderful crystal, and ain't gonna buy it. The exchange of it shall not be for jewels of the fine of fine gold. The exchange of it, wisdom or knowledge. It's not a commodity that man has or can get. The poorest man ever can get wisdom. And the richest man ever to be could be as stupid as anything. God has used great men in the ministry. From the time that he went off to heaven, set forth two, four fishermen, a tax collector, and a doctor as, as uh, Luke, and sent them out and they, they changed the whole world to Jesus. And all the wise Pharisees, all the wise scribes, and all the wise Sadducees couldn't do nothing but torture and beat and try to stop them and they couldn't even stop the word of God no mention don't even mention shall be made of the coral or the pearls you know those those, those ignorant Old Testament people they knew about coral and pearls the price of wisdom is above rubies and you find in Proverbs chapter 31 the virtuous woman her price is above rubies so with this verse in that in the Proverbs 31 that of that virtuous woman, that virtuous woman is a woman that has wisdom and understand on how to take care of her family and how to take care of the people around her. And she is, if I can use the word, a precious commodity, but there's no co commodity to buy wisdom and understanding. It takes experience. Experience will do you more good than money. That first time, whatever age you are, and you put your hand on that stove that, that has been that has been you, and you realize, ah, oh, it's hot. You couldn't pay for that experience. And for the rest of your life, you're going to look at that stove before you touch it. Is it on? You can get that little tap. How much did it cost you to pay to find out the stove is hot? Nothing. It took you experience. The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it. Neither shall it be valued with pure gold. There's that gold again. Why? Gold is the highest standard of man. And whatever the highest standard of man, God says, keep it. Because I'm going to burn it all up in the end when Mother Earth burns up. And I am going to pave my street in New Jerusalem with gold. The street that we walk on in New Jerusalem is gold. And God says, even that can't buy the wisdom. You know, they were remarkable remarks that when Jesus was 12 years old and he's sitting there talking to him at the temple. What the, This kid knows a lot. Because the wisdom and understanding came from what? Not the schools, not from Joseph, not from Mary. It came from God the Father. And the Bible says, Study and show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly divine the word of truth. And to get that wisdom and understanding, you got to read and you got to study. You can't just read, you also got to study. To get that wisdom and knowledge. Again, verse 20. Whence then cometh wisdom? After what we just read, everything. You can't buy it, you can't sell it. Then where does it come from? And where is the place of understanding? 
gold, silver, pearls, uh, uh, coral, rubies, crystals, ores, precious ores, gems, jewels. That can, so where do I get it? Job asked himself a question. He laid many things out there. He said, you know what? That ain't the answer. That ain't the answer. Seeing it is hid from the eyes of all living. So evidently it does not come with with, with, with people. Because you can have the knowledge of, of God as a child and you can be taught out of the knowledge of God through school in evolution. You can be taught out of God in a religion. You can just one day said this completely didn't die. God say there is no God. That's not wise. And that's not understanding. And kept close from the falls of the air. So the birds that fly around can't get this wisdom and understanding. Also falls in the Bible are a type of devils. Destruction and death say. We have heard the fame thereof with our ears. <laughs> Death says, I've heard of wisdom. Destruction on this earth that I've heard of understanding. And what's come of it? Torment, pain, sorrow, lifelessness. God understands. Oh, there you go. God understands the way they're up. God knows the way. Man does it. The birds don't. Death and destruction's heard of it. Gold can't do it, but God knows. And he knoweth the place thereof. So there is a place of understanding. There is a way of, of, of knowledge. And God knows. And this is 66 books of the Bible called the King James Bible today. It's not in a modern Bible. It's not in any Bible that has more than 66 books. And that's why God says study. One Bible, only one Bible, only one Bible says study and show thyself approved unto God. For he, God, looketh to the ends of the earth and seeth under the whole heaven. God sees it all. I forget that's omnipresence, omni, it's one of them army words. God knows it all, sees it all. He, God's the great holy know-it-all. That's what I call it. To make the weight of the wind. Did you know what wind has weight? And he weigheth the waters by measure. So in high tide, low tide, God said, "There's a there's a specific weight that that great salt sea over there evaporates so much." God says, "So much that Jordan River overflows its bank so much." God has set forth the standard. Only so much rain can go there. So much rain can go. Not enough that. So much. When he made a decree for the rain. God's in control of the weather. How's that? A way for the lightning of the thunder. God gives us the lightning. God gives us the thunder. Thank God when you get rain. Thank God we get lightning, and thank God you get thunder. It's all from Him. There are places in this world that they, they uh, I'm told by a friend, that his family lives in Arizona. There's a time when it rains in this, in this city, in Arizona, I don't know where it is, but the people in the neighborhood open up their garage doors, they get their chairs, and they sit in their garages, and they watch the rain that comes this time of year. They make it an event. And when it's going to rain in this place in there, it, they're just they're out there enjoying it because they get so few of rain. And then there are places that get too much rain. Rain comes from God. Then did he God see it and declared it, and he prepared it, yea, and searched it out. Now we're getting the weather from on and on here. Even weathermen don't understand weather. Well, we have a 30% chance of rain today. And boom! It pours. And then they'll turn around and say, well, 90% chance of rain today. And you get four days of sunshine and nothing. Weathermen don't understand the rain. Weathermen don't understand the weather. 
And yet they act like they, and they got degrees from their weather schools and they don't know nothing. Oh, we have the, the proximity angle of this, of this hurricane and they don't know nothing. God does. Now a verse. Of all the important verses of the Bible, Job 28, 28 is one of them important verses that you need to know. It is important. And unto man God saith, he saith. This is what God says to man. Behold the fear of the Lord. And man says no fear. So when you say no fear, you're already rebelling against God. You're a fool. The fear of the Lord with what God says, that is wisdom. You want to be wise? Fear God. You don't fear God, you're not wise. There it is in the Bible. So go up to the math magician, go up to a, a scholar, go up to a chemist, go up to a nuclear scientist, go up to the educated, and go up to the president of the United States and say, are you smart? Are you? Yes, I am. Do you fear God? No, I don't. You're a fool and you don't know nothing. Job 28, 28. Ask a little child, say, do you, do you believe in God? I believe in God. Do you fear that thunder and lightning? Yeah, I, I, God, that's God. That kid's got wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Now you apply to depart from evil is understanding. And you get somebody, oh, I'm, I'm saved, I'm a Christian. And they don't depart from their sins. You have no understanding at all. And when you are involved in your sins and you are happy in your sins, there's no understanding. And there's no fear of God. Because you keep on doing the sins you do and you don't care. Job 28 is one of them important verses in the Bible. It's God's formula of being smart to know God and to understand God. And that there's consequences. Talking to a man who has been beaten by the devil. Job 1 and 2. 